Hello friends, welcome to another video of Mule 4 Learn from D. Today we are going to discuss about uh, the file connector. Uh, the basic purpose we all know that uh, the file connector is being used for uh, reading files, I mean file content, uh, whatever we have inside the file and uh, we also uh, should remember that uh, uh, there could be multiple type of files. Uh, but uh, for today's demonstration, uh, we will be using a simple text file uh, to make it simple and gradually uh, we will try to make it, uh, uh, make it uh, realistic uh, and uh, we will make it like uh, real world scenarios. So uh, and also uh, there could be some scenarios where uh, we want to uh, read the files from the remote location and sometime we can um, uh, we can have some scenario where we can uh, I mean we need to read the file uh, from a local uh, hard drive so uh, we will try to cover most of those scenarios so as we know that MuleSoft is being used for um, integration purpose so uh, when when we want to integrate multiple enterprise applications let's say there is one application abc and it it wants to uh, send some data to another system that is xyz so let's say uh, it is like uh, so integration scenario if i see uh, say it like this integration scenario let's say there is a source system that we call as um, ABC and there is a target system that is let's say XYZ right so these two are the systems which are trying to communicate with each other but they don't have any any um, sort of uh, communication i mean they, they they cannot directly communicate with uh, each other so there comes the actual actual uh, role of mulesoft help this so the role of mulesoft would be to uh, build an integration layer uh, where it will help these uh, two systems two systems to communicate with each other so that is the whole and sole purpose of um, our uh, mules for this particular uh, scenario now uh, let's say uh, this uh, source system sends us a simple text file simple text file and the same way let's say the target system XYZ uh, wants to uh, uh, wants the same file to be in a different directory so uh, there comes the picture of I mean uh, the output directory so working directory output directory we'll see all these in the when we actually build the application in any point studio so output directory let's say i will make it as the same uh, which we have mentioned it here and we will make it as output right so this way uh, this is the whole scenario we can think of so uh, let's say the source system abc sends the file in the working directory uh, this is just for demonstration we are trying to do this working directory and then the target system wants the same file to be placed same same file to be placed in output directory let's say we will make it as to be present to be present in the output directory so this is the integration scenario which we are trying to demonstrate here now for this uh, we will uh, create a new mule project 
uh, from this scratch we will try to do it and uh, i already have opened the anypoint studio so let me show you which option i'm i mean which version of anypoint studio i'm using uh, this is uh, 7.12.0, uh, this is the version I am using and the, so we need to uh, click on this create mule project, so this is a, one option and from here also in the file new we can also select mule project, right. So the mule project name we already decided, so DG world mules mule uh, file read version 1 this is the name we are giving and just uh, we need to click on finish and once we click on that so the mule server we are using is 4.4.0 uh, so the, that is the version we are using for this particular uh, demonstration and if you see our mule project has been created and this is the mule configuration file uh, which has been created now if you see here uh, by default this three uh, this this three modules are there one is the core then http and the socket so we don't have the file module uh, or the uh, whatever you say file connector module the, 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 this is not present in this palette by default so what we need to do is we need to click on this add module and once you click on this add module, we'll see the all the list of modules that are available to be added to the mule palette. So uh, let's say we want to add this file connector because we, as I mentioned that we want to use the file connector for this particular integration, right? So the I will just uh, select, I mean, I will click on this uh, file module and then I will drag it from here to this left panel side if you see it is already showing drag here to add the object something like that right so if you see I have just um, uh, taken the file module from the right side and I'm putting it to the left um, side of this mule palette now once I do that if you see that uh, the file module has been added uh, by uh, added to our mule palette and now we can see all the operations which are available for the file module and similarly if you want to uh, see the uh, modules which are added already to your project so you can directly right click on your project and then manage dependencies and then manage modules so there you should be able to see the file connector in your modules in the inside the uh, mule project uh, you will be able to see the mule modules and anytime if you want to uh, uh, verify if there is any uh, latest version available if you see the uh, blue blue uh, circles these these dots are showing here so that means there is uh, a new version available for these connector modules right so uh, we have these two options update all dependencies to the latest that we can use for updating the modules to the latest version and also we have uh, this uh, refresh check for update button which will uh, i mean if we want to um, for forcefully we, if we want to um, check the updates uh, for any connector uh, that time we can use this update check for updates button uh, so for our case uh, the version which we have added that is uh, sufficient we don't need to update it to the latest one so just uh, this is a simple integration scenario we are trying to implement here so I will just click on cancel and uh, what I will do is uh, I will uh, take this operation on new or updated file so this is the operation um, I will I will I will select this one and I will drag it here and once I drag it to the actual um, this um, uh, place this uh, then it will create a mule flow and here if you see uh, also if you ho um, uh, hover over to the uh, uh, on the, on this uh, particular option you, you see that it triggers when a new file is created uh, in a directory when uh, triggers when a new file is created in a directory 
so that means uh, that this already indicates that what kind of operation this particular uh, component performs so uh, this is um, this component actually uh, tries to scan a particular directory which i mentioned that we have in the working directory so we will configure this one as the uh, directory where from we want to read the file so uh, this is where we will put that information so and then it will uh, as far once we put this directory here in the directory section uh, it will try to uh, it will try to scan that particular folder uh, and then uh, it will uh, if there is any file present in that particular folder it will try to read that right so that is how it, it, it works now if you see there was some error it was showing up but once we click on this empty area uh, it, it got resolved right because we already have provided the directory now by default this recursive option is already checked Mm, I would say that we will keep it and we'll try to see what exactly it is doing. So basically, uh, the, this recursive option is um, used when we want to just uh, recursively uh, uh, recursively read the subfolders as well. Uh, for any any in case we have any any folder uh, inside this input folder, and if we want to read the files from there as well that time this recursive option we actually uh, use but by default as the, as by default this one is selected so we will keep it as is and we will just try to uh, make our flow as simple as possible so i'll click on um, favorites and then we have the logger so i'll put a logger here and i'll enable this uh, a function mode uh, effects and then I'll okay, I'll make it as payload so just by mentioning payload it will just uh, try it, it will try to uh, print the content of the file which we have in that particular uh, directory this this directory okay so let me tell you that we haven't changed any other options just we have put the directory value here and we will see what other functions we have so we'll try to check them and then based on that we will uh, proceed okay so i'll just save this one and then uh, our our uh, this is our mule project and uh, which is having only once uh, only one mule configuration file and that is that particular configuration file is having only one flow that is this one DG world mule file uh, read version one flow this is the one uh, the, the name got created automatically for the flow so uh, i'll just right click in the empty area and i'll i'll uh, select run project dg world mule uh, this cell this option and once i do that uh, it will actually try to run our project so one uh, until the time it deploys our project we'll try to go to this folder where uh, uh, we i actually um, created these folders before uh, i mean um, uh, so that we can quickly go to these folders and we can use the uh, use it for our demonstration purpose so in case for your case you need to uh, manually create these folders for the demonstration purpose so if you see the input i have mentioned so this is the file i will just remove this one so this input file is there so let's say i have used this this is the folder uh, where the input file was present but uh, that uh, that we don't want so let me just uh, stop this one and then uh, just stop this project and then we will run it once again okay uh, just to be sure that uh, nothing is present in our this folder before before we run the project uh, So this is the input folder which is not having anything This is the output folder which we are not yet using in our flows, but we will use And this is the sample file and let me show you what is there inside the sample file. So if we see uh, I have just put hello dg world. This is the uh, this is the 
uh, data we have inside the input file so i am keeping it very simple for the uh, demonstration and we will try to go a uh, little bit complex uh, once we uh, go ahead with the uh, demonstration okay so uh, this is the input file so what i will do is i will copy this one i will copy and then i will go to this and then input folder but uh, before that if you see our our application is already deployed and uh, this is how okay so if you see the successfully reconnected this is the log last log is there so I'll just try to clear this one and let's say um, I have copied that file if you see so now I will just try to paste it here and once I do that if you see if you observe the logs it is trying to read the file and it is printing the uh, content from that file right so if you see it is trying to uh, read and it is trying to uh, print the content because that's what we have performed in our uh, this one right in our logger component so that is how we can read the file contained from a specific folder and let me tell you that this is actually uh, for this uh, demonstration we have uh, used uh, the local uh, folder which is present in our um, in our uh, local drive uh, but there could be uh, some scenario where we want to read the files from the remote location so for that we need to use uh, uh, ftp or sftp uh, any of the options okay so i will just um, to because this is if you see this is just reading the file again and again uh, so it, it's an endless process right it is because if you see uh, this input file it is present there and it is not getting removed so every time the it is scanning this on new or updated file uh, it is uh, scanning that particular folder and it is getting the file and then it is actually uh, reading it and again printing it through this logger component right so what we can do is uh, let me just remove this file uh, from here so i'll just delete it from here and if you see once we delete it uh, this got stopped because there is no file in this in the in the um, folder in that working directory folder right so that is the reason uh, it has stopped now how can we uh, stop uh, reading the same file again and again right so for that we have different different option we have uh, we have this post processing actions so what we can do is we can automatically delete the delete the file for that we can uh, for that we can uh, mention this as true this auto delete as true right so once we do that let's say uh, let's see what it actually uh, how, how it actually acts okay and another thing is if you see the schedule strategy is a fixed frequency and that means uh, the the folder that we have mentioned in the working directory that will be uh, that will be uh, scanned every every 1000 millisecond right so 1000 milliseconds uh, refers to one second so every one second it will try to uh, read the uh, read any file that is present in the uh, folder so the, it, basically it will scan the folder which we have mentioned in this directory section it will try to scan the folder every one second right so how how do we know that so let's say we put another logger and here uh, we are just trying to print the we are trying to print the uh, uh, this timestamp right so we will try to print the timestamp 
now let's say uh, we are trying to print the timestamp so what i will do is i will just stop this one and uh, let us just do one thing uh, for the time being we will make the auto delete as false which is the default value so we'll make it this one and then uh, we'll just save it so that it deploys the uh, latest code it, it will automatically deploy that if you see it has deployed right now let's say we are clearing this log and now we will do the same once again test sample we will copy this one control c and then we will try to put it here now if you see every second this two two logs are getting printed right now let's check what is the timestamp so every time it is it is actually printing it now let's do one thing i will just remove the file from here so that our uh, the, the the folder become empty and it doesn't read that uh, again and again so if we observe the log let's say if you see this is 30 31 32 33 34 so this way uh, because uh, if you see only one second gap is there right between two so so it is reading basically it is scanning the folder in a fixed frequency that we have mentioned here now let's say we want to make it two seconds so for that if you see the the unit is mentioned as milliseconds we can you mention the um, unit as uh, we uh, th with this values right so because we have we are using millisecond this is the default value we are making it as 2000 which means 2 seconds right so now we will uh, save this one and as a result it will try to deploy our code so if you see it is it has deployed our code and now we will do the same thing once again I already copied the earlier uh, sample file so it is already giving me option uh, because uh, so I will just select the, the same option which will paste our file here and if we see the logs are getting printed and this time if you see there is two seconds gap right so that way uh, that particular uh, option actually works so i'll just delete this once again so that uh, the it doesn't read it again and again so we'll just monitor this timestamp so if you see there is two seconds gap right so similarly that is how uh, you can uh, play with this uh, scheduling strategy and the, the with the frequency and millisecond right so this uh, the by default the value was 1000 so we'll keep it as is and now uh, let's say we want to uh, okay something got changed here so uh, be careful with the scroll button in your mouse because and that actually uh, if you see it is it is automatically changing right i'm not selecting anything so please be careful with that one and so this one i think uh, okay so something got changed so i'll just close this one i don't want this to update anything so i'll just open it once again and i'll go to this one this component property so this time okay so uh, if you see everything else is same uh, just the this one uh, we want to update it to the actual value that is uh, 1000 millisecond and I will save this one and then we will check this recursive property we will check this recursive property we will come to this post processing action but before that we will try to check how the recursive property works right 
so let's say we are creating a folder inside this working directory let's say this is a temporary folder right and inside that temporary folder if you see uh, the our our application got uh, deployed uh, with the uh, new change that we mentioned here that was the frequency value we updated to 1000 millisecond and this time we are about to check the recursive property now for as i mentioned the recursive property this input folder it will uh, if we uncheck this recursive property then uh, this uh, it will check only the input folder not any folder which is present inside that so let's say we are we want to put the sample file this which is this one i'll say control c and then i will place the sample file here now if i do that if you see still it is reading right still it is reading those files because the recursive property is checked so it will check any folder uh, i mean any file which is present inside this input folder also any file that is present inside any folder that is present inside this input folder right like it is happening we have created a folder temporary folder and inside that we place the file and we see that uh, still mules of is uh, reading that file right so i will do i'll just uh, remove this one from here so that uh, this log printing it doesn't read it again so now it is stopped now i will clear this one what i will do is uh, in the same property uh, i'll just uncheck this recursive let's observe how it uh, behaves right so i have unchecked this one now uh, if you see a star mark has come uh, to this particular uh, uh, file so i'll just click on empty area and i'll control s i'll do control s so now it is saved and automatically our application got deployed if you see now i will clear this log and let's uh, do uh, the similar testing once again right so if you see i'll just copy this one copy and then i'll put inside temporary folder first okay so i'll put uh, here i'll put the file here and now if you observe there is no log in the console so because the recursive property is unchecked it is not reading any folder that is present inside this input directory this working directory right this input folder so, but let's see what happens if we place the file inside the directly inside input folder in, in that case uh, we we will see that it will uh, read that file and it will read the content right so i'll just paste it here and if you see the log has started coming right so that is how uh, the file um, on new or updated file this one actually works right so we know the uh, how the uh, record recursive property actually works right okay so uh, we now uh, we have now gone through these properties uh, that is the frequency then uh, the recursive property this this thing we have um, we have just demonstrated right so what i will do is i will remove this file from here i'll remove this and uh, i'll keep the temporary folder here because i'm not going to use the recursive so uh, if you see the log printing is stopped because the file i have removed from there so now another thing 
if you see if you observe the log it was trying to remove i mean it was trying to read the file again and again and that was because there was no post processing action right and i had to manually remove the file from the from the working directory right so that is if we mention post processing action as if you see auto delete is false so that is the reason it is not actually doing any post processing so uh, uh, as part of post processing basically these properties it actually uh, use these properties to uh, perform any post processing action because the auto delete is false it is not deleting the file from the uh, working directory once it is read right so and and that is the reason i had to manually remove the file from the folder so what i will do is i will make it true and i will just save the uh, save the file and then it will automatically deploy if you see that is automatically deployed right so now it is automatically deployed and this time if i copy the sample file and if i put it here so for our uh, for our demonstration let, let me just remove this uh, log from here and then i will try to put the file here and if you see this time this time it has just read the, it has read the file only once and that is it it is not um, reading it again and again because there is a post processing action that we have mentioned and we have we have told the connector to uh, to delete the file once it is read right so let's check the file folder if you see the file is not there right okay but this is not good right because uh, once the file is once the file is uh, read uh, and we want to archive it right so to keep a record because in ideal scenario when you will do the actual integration that time you will you will face a scenario where we don't want to directly delete the file we want to keep a record saying that okay this file was read already and we want to keep a record saying that we will just archive it we will not uh, because in this case if you see uh, the file is not present anywhere right we cannot just uh, if someone comes later and if they tell us okay i um, the the system this one let's say our our uh, indication scenario is this one so abc uh, is sending a file right and let's say the abc is sending this file this input file to this directory input directory right so let's say uh, the abc uh, source system uh, sends multiple files throughout the day so there could be thousand files um, ten thousand files would be there and uh, the, we have the mulesoft integration in place and we are reading those files but let's say uh, at at 4 pm uh, on a particular day uh, source system abc came to us and saying that hey uh, i sent one file at uh, 3 uh, 59 pm ist and that was not actually sent to target system or let's say that was not read by uh, mulesoft they they are channel challenging the integration functionality so in that case we should for 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 uh, giving some evidence um, to to prove that mulesoft have, was successfully able to read those files we need to keep a record right and for that is the reason we should always keep a record of those files which we have read right so for that what we will do is we will create another folder that is archive and we will use this folder to 
we will use this folder to uh, uh, keep the record right so in this particular connector we will mention that so our archive folder would be this one archive directory is this one right so we'll mention this in the connector configuration so we'll say move to this directory right and uh, okay so control s now i'll say control s so if you see it will just try to deploy it and now it is deployed right so let's do the same testing once again so we will copy this one and then we will put it inside this uh, input folder and we will check so before that i will just uh, clear the logs and then i will place the file here and if you see the file was read by the mulesoft integration flow and then we will check the archive if you see the archive is having this file now there is another issue if you see the input file is we have successfully uh, placed it in the archive right so let's say we are again sending another file with the same name and this time if you see MuleSoft was able to read that and similarly the, the, the timestamp and the file content was printed in the log. Now let's check the archive. In the archive we have only one file, right? Why? We placed two files and MuleSoft MuleSoft was able to read the files. If you see, two times we uh, read the file, but our archive is having only one file, right? And if you see, it is having the latest one, that is uh, 137 p.m. Let's see what which one is the log for that. 137 p.m. Okay, so this timing. Uh, one minute so this timing is sh this timing is nothing but the uh, timing date modified of this particular file I mean the con when the file was created that that timestamp it is showing okay so that means uh, when MuleSoft is reading the file and it is trying to move that to the archive directory, it is actually replacing any file with the same name that is present already in the archive file, I mean archive folder. So what we should do? We should find out some way so that we can actually, we can uh, uh, place each file that was read by MuleSoft, we can place them uh, in a way in the archive file so that we can later on go to the archive file and find out those uh, files for our uh, for our history of record, right? We should be able to find out uh, the files that were uh, read by uh, MuleSoft. So for that one, what we need to do is we need to use the rename to this. So for rename to, I will mention as let's say I will. Uh, this is the, the here you need to give the file name. So I'll make it as just click on this FX that will enable the data weave uh, for um, to be used for this file name. So I will make it as let's say.
I'll make it as read completed read completed and then okay so let's say I'm making it like this so that it can uh, attach the timestamp whenever the file was moved to archive directory I will just save it and as usual it has deployed the uh, so deployed the application to the uh, server automatically now I will cl clear this log and then I will I will keep this file as is and this time again I will copy the sample file from here and then I will put it inside input folder okay so if you see there is some issue input file dot txt does not exist okay so if you see here something is something has gone wrong java in io file invalid path exception let's see what is happening okay so the expression which we have given here that one is not working okay that is good that uh, we have uh, given something uh, which is not working so uh, we need to correct this one right okay so it says illegal character this read completed oh okay so if you see the file name which we gave was the read completed and then the timestamp and if you see the timestamp is having something like this right and this is not this this particular uh, this colon is not accepted in the file name that is the reason it has mentioned as illegal character right okay so we'll just try to fix this one okay so what we can do is we should we should somehow modify this portion right so let's say because this one is giving uh, that uh, colon and this particular thing right so somehow what we want to do is we want to use this part and then uh, this hour then this minute and second right so that is what we want to attach to our file name so what we can do is we should write this as now as date time as string and then we will mention the format so if you see now it has gone to i mean we are not able to see it uh, see all the uh, thing which we have written here so we can click on this and then we will mention it as format and then inside format we will mention the year that we want then the month date then hour then minute and then second right and if you see we don't have any issue okay so for the for the better reading we will put a hyphen here so that we can clearly uh, see the timestamp okay so if you see there is no error so i will just save this one and it it has deployed the uh, new code so let me just copy the same sample file control c 
and then we'll put it uh, okay before that make um, let me clear the log and now i will put it here paste and this time if you see we don't have any error and we our file was successfully read by mulesoft and this is the timestamp now let's check the archive folder if you see this is how the archive file looks like right because we mentioned read completed and then the timestamp so this is how we can do so now uh, if we want to place another file let's say i'm placing the another file this input file if you see it was already read by the mulesoft and then if we go to the this one archive we have the second file as well and if you see the date modifier is showing as the same because the uh, this particular property shows the uh, create i mean when the fi actual file this file content was actually modified so as part of mule is uh, mule our mule flow is reading the file that is fine but it is not modifying anything okay that's the reason this timestamp is uh, different I, I mean it is showing same however we can uh, identify our file with the timestamp that is here attached in the file name right okay so uh, that is it uh, for today's video i will try to uh, uh, make the um, uh, demonstration i will try to make this particular solution uh, more realistic to the real world uh, project scenarios so uh, see you in the next video thank you